In the competitive field of software development, preparing for a Java developer interview is crucial. This video will guide you through the top 25 interview questions frequently asked by employers, along with detailed answers to help you succeed. Whether you are a novice or an experienced professional, the questions covered will enhance your understanding of Java concepts and coding practices. Join us to gain insights that will boost your confidence and improve your performance in interviews. 1. What are the main features of Java that make it popular for enterprise applications? Java is renowned for its robustness, security, and platform independence, making it a preferred choice for enterprise applications. Key features include strong memory management through automatic garbage collection, which helps prevent memory leaks. Its rich API and extensive libraries enable developers to build complex applications efficiently. Java's multi-threading capabilities allow simultaneous execution of tasks, enhancing performance. Additionally, the language's object-oriented nature promotes code reusability and scalability, essential for large enterprise systems. Security features, such as the Java Security Manager, further ensure the safe execution of applications across networks. 2. Explain the difference between JDK, JRE, and JVM. The terms JDK, JRE, and JVM refer to different components of Java's platform. JDK, Java Development Kit, is a complete toolkit for developing Java applications, including the JRE, compilers, and various tools. JRE, Java Runtime Environment, is a subset of the JDK and provides the libraries and components necessary to run Java applications. It includes the J versus M, JVM, Java Virtual Machine, is the engine that executes Java bytecode, enabling platform independence. It performs tasks like memory management, garbage collection, and providing a runtime environment where Java programs can run. 3. What is the difference between an abstract class and an interface in Java? An abstract class is a class that cannot be instantiated and may contain both abstract methods, without a body, and concrete methods, with a body. It allows for defining common behavior and state among subclasses. In contrast, an interface is a contract that defines methods without implementation, requiring implementing classes to provide the behavior. A class can implement multiple interfaces, promoting flexibility in design. Abstract classes support state, fields, while interfaces do not, leading to different use cases, such as when shared functionality is needed versus when multiple behaviors need to be defined across unrelated classes. 4. How does Java achieve platform independence? Java achieves platform independence through its use of the Java Virtual Machine, JVM. When Java code is compiled, it is transformed into an intermediate form called bytecode, which is platform independent. This bytecode can be executed on any system that has a JVM installed, allowing the same Java program to run on different operating systems without modification. This, write once, run anywhere, philosophy is a key feature of Java, enabling developers to create applications that are more versatile and accessible across various environments. 5. Explain the concept of inheritance in Java. What are its advantages? Inheritance in Java is a mechanism where one class acquires the properties and behaviors of another class. The class that inherits is called a subclass, child class, while the class being inherited from is called a superclass, parent class. This promotes code reusability, as common functionality can be defined once in the superclass and inherited by multiple subclasses. It also establishes a hierarchical relationship between classes, making it easier to manage complex systems. Advantages include reduced code duplication, enhanced readability, and flexibility, allowing for polymorphism where a subclass can be treated as its superclass. 6. What is method overloading and method overriding? How do they differ? Method overloading refers to defining multiple methods in the same class with the same name but different parameters, type, number, or both. This allows methods to perform similar functions but with different inputs. Method overriding, on the other hand, occurs when a subclass provides a specific implementation of a method that is already defined in its superclass. The method in the subclass must have the same name, return type, and parameters as the method in the superclass. The key difference lies in their purpose. Overloading is about having the same method name with different signatures, while overriding is about redefining a method in a subclass to alter or extend its behavior. 7. What are the access modifiers in Java and what do they mean? In Java, Access modifiers determine the visibility and accessibility of classes, methods, and variables. There are four main types of access modifiers. 1. Public. Members declared as public are accessible from any other class in any package. 2. Protected. Protected members are accessible within the same package and by subclasses in any package. 3. Default. No modifier. Members without an explicit modifier are accessible only within the same package. 4. Private. 
private members can only be accessed within the class they are declared in, restricting visibility to that class only. These modifiers help encapsulate data and promote security by controlling access levels. 8. Explain the difference between checked and unchecked exceptions in Java. Checked exceptions are those that are checked at compile time. They must be either caught or declared in the method signature using the throws keyword. Examples include IO exception and class not found exception. Unchecked exceptions, on the other hand, are not checked at compile time. They derive from runtime exception and include exceptions like null pointer exception and array index out of bounds exception. While checked exceptions force the programmer to handle them, unchecked exceptions indicate programming errors that can often be avoided through proper coding practices. 9. What is the purpose of the final keyword in Java? The final keyword in Java serves multiple purposes. When applied to a variable, it indicates that the variable's value cannot be changed once initialized. This is useful for creating constants. When final is used with a method, it prevents the method from being overridden in subclasses, ensuring that the original behavior remains intact. Lastly, when applied to a class, it prevents the class from being subclassed, which can be beneficial for security or design purposes. Using final helps in enhancing code stability and integrity by restricting modifications. 10. How does garbage collection work in Java? Garbage collection in Java is a process of automatic memory management. The Java Virtual Machine, JVM, periodically identifies and discards objects that are no longer reachable or needed by the application. This helps prevent memory leaks and optimizes the available memory. The garbage collector uses algorithms like mark and sweep, generational collection, and reference counting to manage memory. Objects are typically allocated in the heap, and when they are no longer referenced, the garbage collector reclaims that memory. This process happens in the background, allowing developers to focus on application logic without worrying about manual memory management. 11. What is the difference between ArrayList and LinkedList? ArrayList and LinkedList are two commonly used implementations of the list interface in Java. ArrayList is based on a dynamic array, which allows for fast random access of elements. However, it can be slower when inserting or removing elements, particularly in the middle of the list, due to the need for shifting elements. In contrast, linked list uses a doubly linked list structure, enabling efficient insertions and deletions at any position, as it only requires updating pointers. However, its random access time is slower than ArrayList because accessing an element requires traversing the list from the beginning or end. Choosing between them depends on the specific use case regarding performance needs. 12. Explain the concept of multi-threading in Java. What are the benefits? Multi-threading in Java allows multiple threads to run concurrently within a single program. This enables efficient utilization of CPU resources by performing multiple tasks simultaneously. Each thread represents a separate path of execution, allowing for better responsiveness in applications. Benefits include improved performance through parallel processing, enhanced application responsiveness, and simplified program structure for complex tasks. It is particularly useful in scenarios like GUI applications, where user interaction must be maintained while performing background operations. Additionally, multi-threading facilitates resource sharing among threads, reducing memory overhead. 13. What is the difference between string, string builder, and string buffer? String, string builder, and string buffer are three classes in Java used for handling strings. String is immutable, meaning once created, its value cannot be changed. Any modification results in a new string object. String builder, on the other hand, is mutable and designed for single-threaded scenarios, allowing modifications without creating new objects which makes it faster for operations like concatenation. String buffer, similar to string builder, is also mutable but is synchronized, making it thread safe. This means string buffer is suitable for multi-threaded environments, though it comes at the cost of performance compared to string builder. 14. How do you handle exceptions in Java? Explain the try catch finally block. In Java, exceptions are handled using the try catch finally block. The try block contains code that might throw an exception. If an exception occurs, control is transferred to the corresponding catch block, which handles the exception. Multiple catch blocks can be used for different exception types. The finally block is optional and executes after the try and catch blocks, regardless of whether an exception was thrown or caught. It is commonly used for resource cleanup, such as closing files or releasing database connections, ensuring that necessary actions are taken even if an error occurs. 15. What is the difference between equals equals and equals? Method in Java? In Java, equals equals checks for reference equality, meaning it verifies whether two references point to the same object in memory. In contrast, equals is a method that checks for value equality, which compares the actual content or state of the objects. For example, 
two distinct string objects containing the same character sequence would yield true with equals, but false with equals equals since they occupy different memory locations. It is essential to override the equals method in custom classes to ensure meaningful comparisons based on the object's attributes, rather than their references. 16. Explain the concept of Java Collections Framework. What are its main interfaces? The Java Collections Framework is a unified architecture for representing and manipulating collections of objects. It provides interfaces, implementations, and algorithms to work with groups of data efficiently. The main interfaces include collection, list, set, map, and queue. Collection is the root interface and defines the basic operations. List is an ordered collection that allows duplicates, with implementations like ArrayList and linked list. Map is a collection of key-value pairs, with hash map and tree map as common implementations. Queue is designed for holding elements prior to processing, with implementations like priority queue and linked list. The framework enhances code reusability and efficiency in managing data. 17. What is the purpose of the static keyword in Java? The static keyword in Java is used to indicate that a particular member, variable or method, belongs to the class rather than any instance of the class. This means that static members can be accessed without creating an object of the class. It allows for memory management by sharing the same variable across all instances. Static methods can only access static variables and other static methods directly. This is particularly useful for utility or helper methods, as well as constants that are meant to be shared universally among all instances of a class. 18. How does Java support multiple inheritance? Java supports multiple inheritance through interfaces, allowing a class to implement multiple interfaces. This approach avoids the complexity and ambiguity associated with multiple inheritance in languages like C++, where a class can inherit from multiple classes leading to the diamond problem. In Java, since interfaces cannot contain implementation, until Java 8 introduced default methods, a class can implement various behaviors defined in multiple interfaces without the risk of conflicting implementations. This design enforces a clear separation of concerns, promoting flexible and maintainable code structures while leveraging polymorphism. 19. What are generics in Java and why are they used? Generics in Java are a feature that allows developers to write classes, interfaces, and methods with a placeholder for types, enabling code to be reused with different data types while providing compiled time type safety. This avoids class cast exception at runtime, as the type information is checked during compilation. Generics promote cleaner code by reducing the need for casting and enhancing code readability. They also enable the creation of algorithms that can operate on objects of various types while maintaining type safety, such as collections. 20. Explain the concept of serialization in Java. Serialization in Java is the process of converting an object into a byte stream, which can then be persisted to a file or transmitted over a network. This mechanism allows Java objects to be easily stored and reconstructed later. The main interface used for serialization is serializable, which is a marker interface, meaning it does not contain any methods. When an object is serialized, all of its non-transient fields are written to the output stream. Additionally, transient fields are not included in the serialization process, ensuring sensitive information is not exposed. Deserialization is the reverse process where the byte stream is converted back into a Java object. 21. What is the difference between HashMap and HashTable in Java? HashMap and HashTable are both classes used for storing key-value pairs, but they have key differences. HashMap is not synchronized, making it suitable for non-threaded environments where performance is crucial. In contrast, HashTable is synchronized, ensuring thread safety but at the cost of performance, as it uses locks for access. HashMap allows null keys and values, while HashTable does not allow any nulls. Additionally, HashMap is generally preferred in modern applications due to its flexibility and better performance characteristics. 22. How do you implement thread synchronization in Java? Thread synchronization in Java can be implemented using several mechanisms, primarily through the synchronized keyword, which can be applied to methods or blocks of code. When a method is declared as synchronized, a thread must acquire the object's monitor, lock, before executing it. This ensures that only one thread can access the method at any given time, preventing race conditions. Additionally, you can use the lock interface from the Java, util, concurrent, locks package for finer control over synchronization. This allows for more complex scenarios, such as trying to acquire a lock without blocking or implementing timed locks. 23. What are Lambda expressions in Java 8 and how are they used? Lambda expressions in Java 8 represent a concise way to express instances of functional interfaces. They allow you to create anonymous methods with a clear syntax, enabling you to write cleaner and more readable code, especially when dealing with collections or streams. 
The syntax consists of parameters, the arrow token to, and the body. For example, x, y, to x plus y defines a lambda that takes two parameters and returns their sum. Lambda expressions facilitate functional programming techniques like filtering, mapping, and reducing operations on collections, making code more expressive and reducing boilerplate. 24. Explain the concept of functional interfaces in Java 8. A functional interface in Java 8 is an interface that contains exactly one abstract method. These interfaces can be utilized as the assignment target for lambda expressions or method references. The at functional interface annotation is often used to indicate that the interface is intended to be functional. Common examples include runnable, callable, and the various interfaces in the Java, util, function package, such as predicate, function, and consumer. This feature promotes a functional programming style, allowing developers to write more concise and readable code by using Lambda expressions. 25. What are the new features introduced in Java 8 and later versions? Java 8 introduced several significant features, including Lambda expressions, which enable functional programming by allowing you to treat functionality as a method argument. The Stream API provides a way to process sequences of elements, supporting functional style operations such as filtering and mapping. Default methods in interfaces allow the addition of new methods without breaking existing implementations. Java 9 brought the module system, enhancing encapsulation, while Java 10 introduced local variable type inference with var. Subsequent versions added features like the switch expressions in Java 12 and pattern matching for instance of in Java 14. As you prepare for your Java developer interviews, mastering these top 25 questions can significantly boost your confidence and readiness. By understanding the core concepts and practicing your responses, you'll position yourself as a strong candidate in the competitive tech landscape. Remember, continuous learning and practice are key to success in this field. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more insightful content. Your support helps us create more resources to aid your career journey.